The day I was diagnosed with a terminal illness, I saw my girlfriend's diary. David is becoming less and less like him. Should I break up with him? Only then did I realize I was just a dispensable substitute. Later, I lost the will to live and lay in the hospital with ineffective treatments. My girlfriend cried her eyes red, begging me not to die. Chapter 1 I stumbled out of the hospital, wanting nothing more than to hold my girlfriend and cry my heart out. She was the person I cared about most in this world. I couldn't imagine what her reaction would be when she heard the news. But after searching everywhere, I couldn't find her. I sat at the table in a daze, taking out the diagnosis report and reading it over and over, trying to find a sliver of hope. However, the words, stomach cancer, still stung my eyes. Tears streamed down my cheeks. I quickly wiped them away, only to see my girlfriend's notebook lying open on the table. Apparently, she had forgotten to close it after writing in it. I wanted to close it for her, but then I saw my name in the last line. David is becoming less and less like him. Should I break up with him? I looked at the date, it was written today. I was bewildered. Who was he? I flipped through the diary, which recorded the process of me and my girlfriend falling in love. But almost every page mentioned him, until a photo fell out of the notebook, and I froze. I picked it up and saw a face that looked 70% similar to mine. On the back were some neat little words. Eternal love, Daniel Lee. I had heard this name before. Alicia's first love. So that's it, I thought. Memories I had ignored flooded back, my mind buzzing, my fingers trembling from the shock. So in Alicia's heart, I was just a stand-in for her first love, before I could recover from the shock. I heard a faint sound of the door opening. Alicia seemed to be on the phone, her face showing a touch of coquettishness I hadn't seen in a long time. When she saw me, she paused, her smile fading instantly. She covered the phone with her hand and frowned at me. Why are you back? Yes, at this time, I was usually still working overtime at the office, striving for a better life for her, to marry her in a grand way. I worked tirelessly at the company only to end up with a dying body and a false heart. I looked at her, clutching the diagnosis report, and hoarsely said, Alicia, let's break up. The room fell silent. Alicia probably never thought I would suggest breaking up one day, but before she could answer, there was a loud noise from the phone, followed by Daniel's urgent voice, Ali, come quick, I had a car accident. What? I'm coming right away. Alicia hurriedly ran out, not even changing her slippers. She turned to leave but remembered me at the last moment. She glanced at me hastily and left a sentence. Let's talk when I get back. Ha. Huh. Wait for you. Impossible. I packed a few personal items and left, but I hadn't gone far when the pain made me pass out on the roadside. Chapter 2. When I woke up again, I found that a kind person had taken me to the hospital. The emergency room was bustling, and I was still receiving in four, with the doctor considerately pulling the curtain for me. Soon, another patient was wheeled in next to me, and the voice sounded increasingly familiar. Daniel, are you alright? Don't scare me, you must be okay. It was Alicia, her voice full of sorrow and true emotion. Even the doctor couldn't stand it. Miss, your boyfriend only has a fractured finger. It's nothing serious. You don't need to be so upset. Alicia seemed stunned and murmured after a while. I'm not. Thank you, doctor. Daniel chuckled and thanked the doctor, who continued to tease him. Look at how much your girlfriend cares about you. It's hard to find such a good girl nowadays. Marry her soon after you get out. Ali is indeed a good girl. Whoever marries her is lucky. What are you talking about? I'll go handle your admission. Alicia scolded him, blushing, and hurriedly left the scene. The doctor was called away, and it was quiet next door again. I lay on the hospital bed, watching the cold medicine drip into my body, feeling as if I had fallen into an ice cellar, my whole body growing colder. I couldn't help but pull out the needle and wanted to leave. At this moment, a phone rang next door, and Daniel's voice sounded again. Hello, I told you not to bother me anymore. What does your abortion have to do with me? Who knows if it's even my child? Just die far away if you want to. Slept with you a few times, and you really think you're a princess. At most, you can be a KTV princess. Daniel hung up irritably, but the next second, the phone rang again. This time his attitude was completely different. Hello, Ryu. Don't worry, I'll repay the money soon. This time the girl I found is prettier than before. You can have a go with her as long as you lower the interest a bit. Before he could finish, I couldn't bear it anymore and violently pulled open the curtain, punching him in the face. Screw you. One punch after another, catching him off guard. I was in a frenzy, hating myself for being a substitute, and angry at Alicia for being blind, until Alicia arrived and pulled me away. David, stop it. The papers in her hand scattered everywhere, the scene chaotic. I looked at her with bloodshot eyes, a thousand words on my lips, but not knowing where to start. Alicia's gaze slowly turned from shock to suspicion. David, were you following me? I stood there, stunned, never expecting her to say that. She thought she had guessed my thoughts and looked full of impatience. David, I told you, 
We are just boyfriend and girlfriend. You have no right to interfere in my life. The intense anger caused by the pain in my stomach made me tremble all over. But I still gritted my teeth and said, Your life is about accompanying other men to the hospital. I glanced pointedly at Daniel. She was angered and humiliated by my insinuation. How can you be so dirty-minded? Can't I have male friends? Do I have to revolve around you all the time? Alicia shouted. And I found her completely unfamiliar. I turned to leave. But Daniel wouldn't miss such a good opportunity to blackmail me. Hit me and think you can leave. I'm telling you. You must compensate me for the mental damage. Or I'll call the police and charge you with intentional assault. I sneered. And before I could speak. Alicia suddenly said urgently. Just give him the money. It's better than going to jail. She turned and grabbed my sleeve. Pretending to be concerned. David. No matter what. You have to admit your mistake. Apologize to Daniel and give him some money. This will be over. And Daniel will forgive you for my sake. Daniel. 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 She seemed to have forgotten that she once called me with such affection. But this term of endearment no longer belonged to me. Of course. I was just a substitute. Now the original had returned. And naturally. I had to step aside. I laughed bitterly. Shook off her hand. Straightened my clothes. And looked around. Finally resting my eyes on Alicia. No money. No life. You son of a. Daniel wanted to stand up and hit me. But stopped halfway. Remembering Alicia was there. Alicia bit her lip and looked at Daniel apologetically. Daniel. Let me talk to him. She then pulled me downstairs. What do you mean? I said. He and I are just friends. Why don't you believe me? The cold wind was piercing. And my stomach churned again. I gritted my teeth and said. Do you believe that yourself? My expression was indifferent. No longer sparing her any face. I know everything. Daniel. David. Your standards for finding a stand-in are really strict. Even the names have to be similar. Why? Afraid of calling the wrong name in bed? Smack. A slap landed hard on my face. Instantly filling my mouth with the taste of blood. David. I never thought you were such a person. I tell you. Daniel is very important to me. And you have no right to insult us like this. Alicia was furious. Pointed at me and scolded. Then left without looking back. My ears buzzed. My mind spinning. I watched her back. Unable to hold on any longer. And fell to the ground. Chapter 3. I passed out again. The frequent fainting and constant pain reminded me that my days were numbered. For a moment. I thought. Maybe I should just die. I have nothing to hold on to anymore. I was an orphan. After all, when I was three, my parents died in a car accident. Since then, my grandmother raised me. She was my only family. But three years ago, even she left me. I was lost, hopeless, and broken, forgetting even how to speak. Then Alicia appeared and saved me. She was so gentle, like a sun that melted my frozen heart. Even though she had many admirers, she still walked towards me through the crowd. Back then, I had nothing. But she stayed with me without hesitation. Even if we had to eat five yuan boxed meals. She enjoyed it, so, I couldn't let her down, I worked hard, wanting a warm little home, that was my lifelong pursuit, I thought we were destined lovers, and happiness was within reach, but today, I realized that from the beginning, I was just a joke, I closed my eyes, thinking it was all over, until a voice called out to me, like a sleeping baby being awakened, reluctant to wake up, the voice was persistent and full of concern, I finally opened my eyes a crack, wanting to see where the annoying voice came from, and then I saw a kind face, and I was stunned. Grandma. Young man. What are you saying? Why are you sleeping here? It's so cold. Get up and go home to sleep. The old lady was chattering. But I didn't hear a word. I just held her tightly. Calling out, Grandma over and over. Grandma. I miss you so much. Take me away. Life is too hard. I have no home. I mumbled these words. And somehow the old lady understood. If you don't mind. Come stay at my place. No charge. If you want to cry. Just cry. Poor child. The cold wind was still blowing, but warmth emanated from the old lady. She didn't mind a grown man crying. She didn't withhold a warm hug. She just patted my back and told me, if you want to cry, cry. I have a place to go. Chapter 4. I was awakened by the smell of food. Opening my eyes, the room was bathed in bright daylight, the sunlight filling it with an almost unreal warmth. Looking around, I saw that the room was simple but clean and tidy, the furniture old but quaint. Instinctively, I searched for the source of the smell and saw the old lady busy in the kitchen. Her silhouette overlapped with my childhood memories, softening my heart. I stood there quietly until she finished cooking and finally noticed me. Child, you're awake. Come and eat. She gestured to me with the dish in her hand, and I nodded silently. We ate the meal in silence. The old lady didn't ask me anything. When she noticed I wasn't eating the chili peppers, she quietly replaced them with milder dishes in front of me. Before I left. I took all the money I had in my bag and stuffed it into her hand. She refused it at first but then paused when she saw the photo in my wallet. 
The wallet held a picture of my grandmother when she was young, something I found while sorting through her belongings, already yellowed with age. It was my only keepsake. The old lady grabbed my wallet, her eyes fixed on the photo, her lips trembling. She stared at it for a long time, then softly called out, Sister. The two short words made me doubt my ears, because I had never heard that my grandmother had any family. The old lady then told me that when my grandmother was young, she married far away. With slow communication and a turbulent society, they lost contact over time. Later, the old lady also got married and completely lost touch with my grandmother. I stood there, stunned. No wonder I felt an inexplicable sense of closeness when I first saw her. Her silhouette always reminded me of my grandmother. Maybe it was she who guided me in the dark, afraid that I would be too lonely. She sent her dearest sister to find me. Thinking of this, I could no longer hold back. I hugged the old lady and cried, my tears soaking her shoulder. Chapter 5 I ended up staying at the old lady's house. Her life was simple. This area was on the outskirts, and she made a living from her little vegetable garden. Every morning, she would take a small basket and go out to sell vegetables. The vegetables were fresh and fairly priced. Everyone who bought from her knew her well, occasionally giving her some daily necessities. I accompanied her, feeling the mundane and ordinary warmth of human life. Until one day. I returned from the vegetable garden. Before entering, I heard a roar from the yard. Old hag, where did you hide the money? Hand it over now. I dropped my basket, grabbed a shovel, and rushed in. I saw the old lady being grabbed by the collar by a man, unable to move. Let go of her. I swung the shovel, making the men grimace and turn around. He froze, and so did I. It turned out that this man was none other than Daniel. What are you doing here? Daniel was the first to react, frowning at me. What does it matter to you? I'm not your grandmother, and I don't have a grandson like you. Get out of here. The further the better. Before I could say anything, the old lady had already recovered. She grabbed a broom from the corner and started chasing Daniel away while scolding him. Covered in dust, Daniel lost interest in me. With nowhere to retreat, he grabbed the broom and violently threw it aside, causing the old lady to fall. Old woman, I'm telling you, I'm the only grandson of the Lee family. What's yours is mine, and don't give me any nonsense. If you don't give me the money, I'll sell this old house. With those words, he lunged forward to search the old lady's pockets. My anger boiled over, and I couldn't hold back any longer. I swung the shovel again, this time with no restraint. Daniel fell into the chicken droppings, crying out in pain. I planted the shovel firmly in the ground and stood protectively in front of the old lady. Are you leaving or not? If you don't, I'll make sure you can't leave today. The threat was clear. Daniel, seeing my fierce expression, quickly lost his bravado. He climbed up awkwardly chicken feathers sticking to his head, looking ridiculous, David Lee, don't think I'm scared of you, I'm telling you, if you have the guts, wait and see, he left those words before running away, I helped the old lady up and guided her to the bamboo chair under the veranda, after catching her breath, she told me that Daniel's parents divorced when he was very young, and later they both remarried, so, Daniel grew up as an unwanted child, raised solely by the old lady, unexpectedly, he repaid her kindness with betrayal, not only getting into trouble but also eyeing the old lady's only house. I finally believed that Daniel was indeed the old lady's grandson, which explained his resemblance to me. In fact, he was my cousin. I couldn't help but shake my head and laugh bitterly. Alicia really had a stroke of luck, even reuniting with long-lost cousins. But Daniel's temperament was nothing like the old lady's. Given Daniel's vengeful nature, he wouldn't let this go easily. So I advised the old lady, Grandma, come with me, I'll take you to the city. No. I'm used to living here, and this old house was left by my late husband. I will guard it until I die. She shook her head in refusal, leaving me with a headache. Leaving was not an option, but staying posed a danger. Then I thought of someone who could help. I had an idea. Chapter 6 As I expected, the next day, Daniel brought his creditor to the door. At that time, I was busy making dumplings. With plates of plump, white dumplings spread all over the courtyard. Daniel seemed surprised to see me still there. Humph. You still have the nerve to make dumplings. He snorted coldly, then turned obsequiously to the thug next to him. Brother Ryu, that's him. He took all my grandmother's money and is stopping me from selling the house. Don't worry, as long as you get rid of him, I'll sell the house immediately to pay off the debt. Daniel looked so confident. I wondered what Alicia saw in him. I wiped the sweat off my forehead, ignoring them. The guest I invited would be arriving soon. Brother Ryu, clearly annoyed by my indifference, barked. Hey, kid. Which gang are you with? Don't you know to get over here when you see brother Ryu? I didn't respond immediately. I finished the last dumpling, washed my hands, and then turned around, pretending to notice them for the first time. Brother Ryu, never heard of you. I shook my head and wiped my hands, but brother Wang will be here soon. I'd advise you to leave quickly. 
Ha ha ha, Brother Wong. Do you think I'm afraid of him? You better tell them to bring more people. I shook my head and held up two fingers. Two people will be enough. They looked at each other as if they had heard a joke. Then burst into laughter. Ha ha ha. Two people. What a big mouth. I didn't say anything. Just smiled faintly. At that moment, a familiar voice came from the doorway. Ryu Fun, it's you again. They're here. Everyone turned to look, and indeed, there were two figures at the entrance. On closer inspection, it was two policemen in uniform. That's right, my backup was the police. Brother Wang was a regular customer of the old lady, often buying vegetables from her stand after his night shifts. Over time, I became familiar with him. A few days ago, I heard their unit was planning to purchase a batch of handmade dumplings. So I volunteered to take on the job, and today was the delivery day. This time, it was Daniel and the so-called brother Ryu who were dumbfounded. They were all taken away by Officer Wang in charges of fighting and causing trouble. Before getting into the police car, Daniel looked at me with eyes full of hatred, almost to the point of madness. He never imagined I wouldn't confront him directly. When one's personal safety is threatened, seeking the protection of the police is the best choice. It's the 21st century. Does he still think violence solves everything? Ha. Huh. Ignorance. Chapter 7. I went to the police station to give a statement and saw Alicia rushing in as I was coming out. As soon as she saw me, she went crazy and started clawing at me. What did you do? How could Daniel be detained? It must be your fault. Come with me now and explain to the police. I shook her hand off and spoke coldly. Get a grip. It was him who came looking for trouble. He colluded with thugs to cause trouble. Alicia, your judgment is terrible. Impossible. No way. Daniel isn't like that. Alicia kept arguing and I didn't want to see her lose her mind, so I turned to leave. Just then, Officer Wong came out. Are you Daniel's relative? You came at the right time. We've just discovered that he's involved in several fraud cases and need your cooperation in the investigation. Officer Wong spoke lightly, but Alicia's eyes widened in disbelief. How can this be? You must be mistaken. Daniel couldn't be a fraud. He helped me before. He's always been a kind person. Young lady, the facts are clear. Daniel not only cheats people out of money but also exploits them emotionally. He targets those who once had a crush on him, taking money from those who have it and exploiting others sexually if they don't. He even forced some into prostitution. The evidence is undeniable. Fortunately, you haven't been with him for long. Turn back before it's too late. Hearing this, Alicia looked like a puppet whose strings had been cut, her shoulders slumping. How? How could this happen? She muttered to herself, seemingly losing her mind. I didn't want to deal with her anymore. In my final days, I just wanted to spend time with the old lady and stay away from these messy situations. However, as I was about to leave, Alicia suddenly seemed to regain her senses and ran over to grab my hand. David, where are you going? Why haven't you been home lately? Where are you staying? I shook her hand off, not wanting to be entangled with her for another second. Alicia, have some dignity. We're already broken up. Your Daniel is where he belongs. Don't call me that. You don't deserve it. Break up. No, I don't agree. I admit I was confused for a while. Forgive me. I promise to live a good life with you from now on. I'll never cause trouble again. I sneered and slowly recited the words she had written in her diary. David is becoming less and less like him. Should I break up with him? Alicia, didn't you already want to break up? Why pretend now? As I spoke, Alicia's face gradually turned pale, and her grip on my hand weakened. She couldn't utter another word. She didn't know that because of my stomach cancer. I had lost 20 pounds and naturally looked less and less like Daniel. She never truly cared about me, from beginning to end. In her heart, I was just an irrelevant substitute. Yet, I didn't feel sad at all, because I no longer needed to beg for her love. In this world, I still had family. Chapter 8 After returning, I began to handle my assets, selling what needed to be sold and liquidating what needed to be liquidated. I realized I wanted to live. I wanted to take care of the old lady until the end, even if it was just for her. I shouldn't give up. So, I started actively receiving treatment, enduring the pain of various infusions and chemotherapy. The old lady didn't ask anything, but I think she knew everything, because she would always make soups to nourish my body and snatch the hoe from my hands, telling me to go rest. It felt like I was back in my childhood, being cared for and loved. Those carefree days where my only concern was what to eat for lunch and whether the melons in the field had grown, until Alicia found me again. At that time, a buyer had shown interest in my house and the agent needed me to sign the contract. I went, only to find out that the buyer was Alicia's mother. I knew it. They were after my house. As soon as she saw me, she knelt down with a thud, begging for her daughter's forgiveness. Alicia followed behind her, head hung low, looking pitiful. I only felt disgusted. Alicia's mother had always looked down on me. When Alicia and I first got together, she constantly made things difficult for me. She often mocked and ridiculed me. In the end, 
She just despised my lack of money, thinking I wasn't good enough for Alicia, so I worked tirelessly, day and night, neglecting my health, and ultimately ended up with stomach cancer. She was the root cause of my illness, and now she had the nerve to beg for my forgiveness. I shook off her hand and turned to leave with a cold face, but she clung to my pants leg, not letting go. David, don't leave. Ali knows she was wrong. She regrets it deeply. She was momentarily misguided, deceived by that scoundrel. If you leave, she won't be able to eat or sleep, and I fear she might do something drastic. Her words made me want to laugh. If Alicia had no such inclinations, how could she be easily deceived? Moreover, she was just worried about losing a sure thing. After all, we were already talking about marriage. This house was my inheritance from my parents, and since we weren't married, she had no claim to it. She was just being spiteful. Did she think she could play the emotional card and get my house for free? I tried to pull my leg away, but the old lady was surprisingly strong, and I couldn't shake her off. Let go. I won't say it again. I shouted angrily, and the old lady froze, probably not expecting my patience with them to have run out, but she still didn't loosen her grip, continuously signaling Alicia with her eyes. Alicia, with red eyes, finally stepped forward to explain. David, I'm sorry. This was all my fault but nothing happened between Daniel and me. I still love you. I don't want to break up. Please don't leave me. Does she take me for a fool? I couldn't take it anymore and kicked her mother away. She fell to the ground, crying out, but I felt no sympathy, just a desire to end this quickly. I said, stop bothering me. I turned to leave, but Alicia clung to me again. David, don't go. I really love you. I know I was wrong. In these past few days, I realized that Daniel was just a youthful regret. These years, I've seen how good you've been to me. If you leave, I'll never find someone better than you. Before I could push her away, Alicia's mother scrambled up and started shouting. Everyone come and see. This ungrateful scumbag is playing with a girl's feelings and now wants to leave. Is there no justice? People gathered around, pointing and whispering, but most of them sided with me. Didn't I hear it was the girl who cheated first? Exactly. And now she has the nerve to cause trouble. Looks like they couldn't get any money out of him. So they're making a scene. The crowd's comments made the old lady feel embarrassed. She originally intended to ask for compensation, but now that it was exposed, she was too ashamed to say anything more. She dragged Alicia roughly, almost causing her to fall. Let him go. I don't believe you can't find someone else to marry without him. That broke loser thinks he's something special. I don't want anyone else. I only want him. Alicia tried to break free from her mother's grip, and the old lady slapped her in anger. The scene became chaotic. With the old lady cursing continuously, I no longer wanted to argue with them. Speaking any more words to such people was a waste. Alicia kept crying and pleading, but I just wanted to end it all. I was about to leave when I bumped into Officer Wang rushing in. He grabbed my hand with a serious, grave expression, and his words made my legs go weak. He said, David, your grandmother is in trouble. Chapter 9 Daniel escaped. Officer Wang said he took advantage of a medical visit to slip past the guards and escape. He initially went to find his parents but they all refused to see him for various reasons. Heartbroken, Daniel returned to the old lady's house, hoping she would pay for his bail. When she refused, he accidentally killed her. The old lady was dead, killed by Daniel. When I arrived, the yard was awash with blood, and the old lady lay cold on the ground, still clutching the small persimmon I loved to eat. I stood there, stunned, unable to believe what I was seeing. Tears fell one by one, but I was completely unaware. Images of the old lady's smiles and laughter from recent times flashed before my eyes, each second feeling like an eternity. Police officers moved around me, some patting my shoulder, others looking at me with concern. Everything felt like it was in slow motion, and I had only one thought in my mind. A life for a life. Daniel didn't run far and was quickly captured. He was brought back by Officer Wong to the old lady's house to identify the crime scene. Before getting into the police car, he passed by me, a malicious smile on his lips. David. Your woman was mine too, and your grandmother was mine as well. Since none of you wanted me, I destroyed them with my own hands. To tell you the truth, I have AIDS, and Alicia should be infected too. She won't live long either. I stood there without saying a word, just quietly watching him, feeling a sense of detachment from life and death. He thought I was devastated and continued to provoke me. How does it feel? Angry, sad, but there's nothing you can do. I've been caught and will face legal punishment. What can you do to me? He laughed wildly, like a demon from hell until a pair of scissors plunged into his heart. His eyes widened in disbelief as he looked at me. Forgot to tell you, I'm not going to live either, so let's go to hell together. I whispered in his ear, driving the scissors deeper. Blood gushed from his mouth, and he staggered back a few steps. Everyone finally snapped out of their shock, and Officer Wong pulled me away. David, you're crazy, he was going to die anyway. 
Why throw your life away? I knew, but I couldn't wait. Finally, I laughed in relief, stumbling to the old lady's side. I looked at her one last time, picked up the small persimmon from her hand, and took a bite. So sweet. Chapter 10. Daniel was declared dead on the spot. After going to prison, I completely lost the will to live. My condition worsened rapidly, and Officer Wong helped me apply for medical parole. Seeing his hesitant expression, I smiled softly and told him I was fine. I was just about to die. I knew I only had a few days left. Alicia somehow found out my hospital room and requested to see me. I woke up to see her sitting by my bedside. Her eyes red from crying. David, you're awake. Are you okay? I closed my eyes again, not responding. Her voice quivered with tears. Why didn't you tell me? Why? It could have been managed if you had just sought treatment. Managed for what? So I could be your substitute or get slapped by you again. Alicia was stunned, trying to grab my hand. David, don't say that. I really know I was wrong. I pleaded with the court for leniency. Just don't die. Don't leave me alone. It's too late. I opened my eyes, staring at her coldly. Everything is too late, Alicia. From the moment you wrote that sentence in your diary, everything was too late. Once the bow is drawn, there is no turning back. There's no turning back. Let me give you some advice. Go get a health checkup. You know what you've done. Alicia stood up abruptly, nervously clutching her clothes. What do you know? I chuckled softly. Don't you already have the answer? She hastily grabbed her bag and turned to leave. I called after her, unable to hide my disdain. Don't bother me again. You disgust me. She flinched at my words but didn't say anything else, quickly leaving the room. Chapter 11. The world finally quieted down, and I drifted into a deep sleep. In my dream, my grandmother kindly beckoned to me, standing beside the old lady and many others. There were my parents, my friends, they were all smiling at me. At that moment, I felt enveloped in happiness, as if I had ascended to heaven, my whole body light and airy. The sounds around me grew faint as I ran towards them. The world no longer mattered to me, and I had finally found my family never to be separated again.